Welcome back. This is your election command center, Ghana Tonight. And let's go straight into it, as I promised you, an exclusive interview with a retired justice of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Ghana. His wealth of experience sitting through as a panel, in fact, a judge on a number of these uh, election petitions that we've had in this country. He knows exactly how things play out when it comes to concerns and, and issues about our electoral system as a country. Justice William Atuguba, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Thank you. It's good to have you. First off, and I know that you, you've been uh, following how things are playing out with respect to the concerns that the NDC has raised about the errors identified in the provisional register that was exhibited. Other political parties have also aligned with those concerns. The Electoral Commission says, well, they've also identified those errors, but they have corrected them. So really, there's no need for an audit. Where do we go from here? Well, um, so uh, the final word purports to be that uh, the corrections have been made, and that's the end of it. The uh, matter ends there, as I understand what your briefing. Yes, essentially, they say that, well, because they have done those corrections. There is really no need for an, an audit, even though the NDC says that they have not seen the corrections that the Electoral Commission saying they have done to the errors. As a matter of fact, does the that that uh, looks very absurd to me, and uh, <clears throat> I don't intend to be abusive, but uh, to make the point very forcefully, I think it's dictatorial to take that posture uh, because the constitution gives them the power but that power is uh, circumscribed by other provisions of the constitution let's look at their powers briefly uh, just the relevant parts <clears throat> so 45 uh, clause Clauses A uh, and D are as follows. The Electoral Commission shall have the following functions. A, to compile the register of voters and revise it at such periods as may be determined by law. D, to educate the people on the electorate, electoral process and its purpose. Let's even pause here a bit. Is that proper education? Uh, just to tell people who have pointed out grievances, which you have acknowledged exist. And then uh, after, after that, you say that's the end. We've affected the corruption. They have not seen them, and that's the end of it. Is that proper education of the people on the electoral process and its purpose? I mean, to uh, have blind trust in the mere ipse dixit of the electoral commission. I say, because that said so, that's the end. That's a dictatorial posture to take. And for me, others can have their views, but looking at this constitution in the round, that kind of situation is entirely outside the boundaries of the constitutional order put in place. Um, the other provision impinging on the powers of the commission or anybody giving power under the Constitution is Article 1, Clause 1. Let us always revisit that provision. It is the most important provision in the entire Constitution. It says, Article 1, Clause 1, the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana. 
in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised in the manner and within the limits laid down in this constitution. So they are, they, all exercise of constitutional power is to be geared towards the interest and welfare of the people as the sovereign of the country. And mm. I'm at pains to see how a sovereign power whose interests and welfare have to be served by all donors of constitutional power can be just dismissed outright. Oh, we've heard your, gone through your complaint, we've affected uh, the corrections. And from social media, they are not even saying they've corrected all, say most of them. And that should be the end of it. To me, that is running, uh, to use an old expression, a chase and four. Uh, as a chariot drawn by forces, uh, horses in the old days. Mm. Uh, through the, the provisions of the Constitution. Nobody, mm. and I want to emphasize, nobody has absolute power that detracts from the welfare and interests of the people under this Constitution. That's a central requirement. And I'm sorry, in Africa, and particularly in this country over the years, people just look at power in absolute terms. I'm sorry. You look at the power conferred, you look at all the other coexisting provisions. They are relevant to the essence of your power. Now, let's mm -hmm. look at Article 3, clauses 3 and 4. Well, this part of your time factor, all they are saying is that every person um, Now, all citizens of Ghana shall have the right and duty at all times. At all times. And that's at all times, anywhere. Because time does not exist in the vacuum. It sure. must be allied to a place. And so that's part of the at all times. And so every citizen, I want to emphasize that, every uh, three, four, all citizens of Ghana shall have the right and duty at all times to defend this constitution and in particular to resist any person or group of persons seeking Commit any of the acts referred to in clause three mm. of this article. Now let's forget about overthrowing the constitution. But overthrowing the constitution by any unlawful means is there any unlawful means, not necessarily by violence or anything. Mm. Anything that is not in line with the constitution, any means. And 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 and, and that includes it going into in an election into an election with with a, 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 an electoral role that has concerns? Oh, sure. It's not a, a, pro, a provision of the Constitution. Right. And uh, it's part of the plan. Every citizen has the right at all times to defend the Constitution. That even is enough. Of the other aspects of our abrogation or so, they are all part of the Constitution. So, no worries, the time is constrained. Uh, let's look at um, Article uh, 41 of the Constitution, Duties of a Citizen. Um, the exercise and enjoyment of rights and freedoms is inseparable from the performance of duties and obligations, and accordingly it shall be the duty of every citizen be to uphold and defend this constitution and the law. Hmm. And so, 
I mean, you just don't look at people in their face and tell them this is what I've done and you have to take it like that. If it's not in line with the Constitution, they have the right to insist that you comply because they have the right and duty to defend the Constitution and the law. Now, with your experience searching through election petitions for that matter, yes. would that audit, as based on what we are confronted with now, be one of the corrective measures to, as it were, s satisfy all of these concerns and answer all the questions about the provisional voters register as exhibited? Absolutely. Now, let me refer to Articles 296. Uh, 296. Exercise of discretionary power. Where in this constitution or in any other law, discretionary power is vested in any person or authority. A, the discretionary power shall be deemed to imply a duty to be fair and candid. Is that an instance of fairness and candidness? I raise plausible uh, errors in the register. And you just Tell me what have affected the corrections. Not even or say most of them. And, and that should end the matter. And you say that's fair and candid. Anyway. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> let's look at another provision relating to the power of the Electoral Com Commission. Uh, 50, 51. The Electoral Commission shall, by a constitutional instrument, make regulations for the effective performance of its functions under this constitution or any other law, and in particular, for the registration of voters, the conduct of public elections and referenda, including provision for voting by proxy. Their power is to make regulations for the effective performance of its functions. Now, what does efficacy, is, is that an effective way of conducting an election? A serious discrepancies are pointed out uh, by a commission which the public uh, doesn't trust much. I don't know much about all this if I'm a lawyer. I don't have time for politics and all that. But what I do know from social media uh, is that people, uh, Afro Barometer says at least one third of the people. Yes country don't have trust in the East. So that's about 30, 33%, I think, yeah. In and I've read um, from social media that, I mean, from what they are saying, unless they are wrong, that the Constitution is mostly comprised of politically exposed persons. I mean, in the first place, the person who exercises that power to be, if I mean, he is mindful of the requirement that the exercise of the power shall be fair and candid. You don't go and bring your stooges to run a national institution. Well, it is the president is, who appointed the, 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 these commissioners. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that their, their appointment, I mean, is in the first place, is fair and candid. If it is true that... Most of them are politically exposed. Is that a fair and candid way of... Uh, and, and should they themselves even accept those appointments? Well, I'm not serious. 
It can be serious, and that's why we are suffering so much. People just enjoy the power without looking at the constraints hedging the power around. That's the African mentality. That's what results in Napoleonic state capture, dictatorship of the type of Mussolini, Stalin, and others. Very amazing that this day and age, all this constitutional journey since 57, we can retrogress like this. Very painful indeed. And others, look, when I was retiring, a lecture was organized in my honor. At the end of it, I asked whether I could say a few words. I said, well, I can just say one or two. And I, I reiterated Article 1 plus 1, that at all times, everybody should be mindful of that provision, particularly judges. And that what would pain me is that some persons can choose that clause which enables them to come to power in the Constitution. And once in power, they seek to negate all the other provisions of the Constitution. And they will get people willing and ready to help them to do so. I couldn't continue. I said, thank you. I went and sat down. This is mm -hmm. where we are. And, and I sense the sense that, that level of trouble and, and as it were the concern about the retrogression um, in our democracy that you, you talk about. I mean, what could be the possible implications of what we are faced with as you have diagnosed as Napoleonic s situation of the state? Well, uh, your guess is as good as mine. You, 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 I'm just a judge, so you, you probably <laughs> have a better background. But if you look at history, let's look at Kenya just recently. What's happening there? I think you followed what has happened there. Yes, sir. You saw how the president retreated. Uh, so many of his powers. And although later he had to raise certain taxes, but you know the far-reaching this thing here. He was forced to do that. The people, look, I hardly watch TV, but by chance, you know, sometimes when I have a visit, I watch that, I sit by them. Uh, during that Kenyan incident, a young man was put before court, and the charge was read to him, uh, his plea was being sought from him. And he said, look, he would continue the fight without fear of anybody. And they were trying to say, oh, but you have to plead. He said, he has no time for that. He is standing where he has come from, and there's no turning back. The police and why not right? They couldn't as witness his life. But we all know of the Arab Spring, hmm? beginning from Tunisia, went to Libya, some other country, I think Egypt. It even went to Syria, although the situation there was not <laughs> constitutionally as bad as the, the other places. Egypt. Yeah. And, and, yeah. It's all about happening. And, and you, you think that Ghana is at that point? We, we are at risk of an experience like that? Well, but you see civil society organizations. For many years, have you seen civil, uh, the, 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 the people massing up and demonstrating here now and then and insisting on their rights and so forth? Have you seen that before? I mean... It's because we have gotten to a level uh, which has provoked that. And nobody knows how it will pan out if dictatorship 
right now, I'm sorry to say, but looking at things, if we're honest, and that the importance is honesty, we're honest in this country, there's state capture of this country, complete state capture. A negation of the Constitution, that's happened. A negation of the Constitution? Complete. How's that? I mean, you are asking me, are you, are you not in this country? You know, you, you've just made that reference. In terms right? of what is this constitution uh, uh, being upheld? Tell me. You don't see the is constitution being speech? upheld in any way? Is it freedom of speech? Is it uh, the, the fundamental rights and shrine the right to um, uh, uh, economic uh, uh, welfare and all that? In fact, our constitution, let me read this thing. Um, I want to emphasize it. By your time is this thing. What it says is that the most sure, the most secure economic right is the right to uh, a good life. I mean, yeah. Uh, about that the, the directive principles of state policy. Yes. It's there, black and white. Mm. I say it at Unate. Is that the stage we are at? Talking about the most secure democracy being that which is able to meet yeah. the basic exactly. needs of its people. Exactly, exactly. Is that where we are? So our democracy is not secured. Is that how to secure democracy? People in fact, I get frightened when I think of, you know, on social media, you find tanker drivers. They say they are paid 700 cities. Some uh, Uber drivers, 300 cities. These people have been sentenced to death. Can you survive on this? You have no right to marry because you can't uh, sustain the marriage. 700 cities is not enough for yourself. How do you pay your rent? And Ghanaians are so money-minded, the rents are high, and they, they don't have time for the rent regulations. Some take three years advance and all. I mean, I mean, huh? a tube of yam It's how much? The least you can Both get is about 30 cities, I think. OK. So a person. Uh, earning 700 or 300. Hmm? Survive under this. Now, look, even as I'm talking, I'm not above risk, but the truth must be told. I've read on social media, even some time ago, two or three years ago, a person as dignified, as high as the late, uh, what's, what's his name, Kwesi Bochi. Then he gave a speech somewhere, and he came out on social media to say that he received death threats. Martin Amido received death threats. I mean, is that a democracy? What are we talking about? What I'm talking about here, even the right to express yourself. I concede that some people to go off tangent. Right or freedom of speech doesn't mean being vandalistic, irresponsible, insulting. Huh? When the case of Tommy Thompson uh, Books Limited came to the Supreme Court, mm. they, they said the libel and sedition laws were not unconstitutional because uh, there cannot be a license to insult as one people. They repealed them, not because they were unconstitutional, but I think people thought otherwise and um, uh, repealed them. But what, <laughs> if that is done to advance constitutionalism, 
Are we, are we enjoying prostitutionalism? Death threats you see to people who are speaking their minds, criticizing the government. This day and age, God have mercy on us. And indeed so. Uh, Justice William Atuguba retired. I would want to thank you so much for staying up to even join us on Ghana tonight and speaking the truth as we are confronted with. And Ghana is glad hearing you tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, no, it's my duty. As a citizen, I've read out the <coughs> duties of a citizen. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> time is very bad. What I want to emphasize, this constitution has in so many articles and provisions ensured that there should be constitutionalism in this country, constitutionalism, rule of law, not rule of democracy, the critics. People who want to behave as if they are monarchs of all the survey. In this day and age, under, not under this constitution. But Ghanaians, well, they are now rising to defend their rights. Can that happen under a constitution like this? And I think I've exceeded my time. Thank no, you very much. In, in, in fact, uh, you, you, you haven't at all. And we, we do appreciate this voice of conscience. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Justice William Atuguba, retired, a former justice of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Ghana, speaking to us exclusively here on Ghana tonight. And well, we had a, a special edition tonight, exceeding the time for good reason. And we have a number of you also uh, contributing to the conversation across all social media platforms. Thank you so much, as always, for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. There's going to be another session with him for more time. But thank you. On behalf of the rest of the team, we appreciate your company.